Good morning, Lompo. Good morning, Lompo. How are you? I'm doing today? good. How are you guys? I, I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, Happy Memorial Day to you. If you noticed anything weird about my face, I woke up with a he big... He didn't take up a chew habit or anything. Uh, no, it's and a... I didn't chew on a golf ball. But no. anyway, I uh, have to go get antibiotics today and go to the dentist first thing in the morning. But... <laughs> Um, it didn't show look must like this on. last night. So just I woke kind of up this overnight. morning and scared my wife. So if if Basically. any of the children are really frightened, yeah, uh, and they miss Jeremy, I brought uh, Michelle's mask. Yeah, Jeremy's been debating on whether or not to wear a mask. I just don't want to scare people. So if you think he should wear a mask, um, give us a thumbs up. But if you think he's Maybe okay, I'll just stay. I'll just look at you the whole time. He, he might stay sideways like that. So anyways, that's what's going on with Jeremy's face. So <laughs> anyway, uh, let's not distract too much from yes. Memorial Day. It's is a, a day when we remember those who have fallen yes. um, while serving in the military. So a little bit later, we're going to talk about a couple of people that were uh, born and raised in Lompoc yep. that uh, died overseas in war. Uh, to remember them a little and bit. And that flyover that you did earlier, that you showed just yeah. a few minutes ago, that was a flyover over the... Um, over the Veterans yep. Memorial Building here yep. at the, uh, I guess, the south end of H Street. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to um, talk about a few of the... Um, people that were from Lompoc that passed away in uh, a few of the different wars mm -hmm. and and then we'll also have some fun stuff so we have a few uh, things from our associate producers um, we've got Hannah White talking about art and Hannah giving White. Us a, what a great drawing name. lesson and we've got James Hurd who is going to do a little science experiment as well and then of course we've got our favorite weather guy yes. who is back with the curls Miranda curls Thank and you, Brittany. We had an opportunity to chat with Mark Harrier. He's the president of the Lompoc Theater Project. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have kind of a, a focus well, on that. Well, that's not it. He's also famous for being in Porky's the Movie when he was younger. And yes. he's also in a couple the, seasons of Bosch the on captain. Amazon. He's the captain in Bosch. So, anyway, a, a really fun uh, local celebrity here. So, yes. anyway, we're super excited to talk to him about the Lompoc Theater Project, which has been. Well, we're specifically going to talk about the history of yes. the Lompoc Theater for this episode. And then um, later this week, we'll also share some memories that he has and that Gary James had from the Lompoc Theater. So we want to get back to that as well. Yes, So absolutely. it's a fun show. It's pretty packed. And um, again, nice. if you think Jeremy's face needs to be hidden. I'll just turn that way. Please let no us can tell. Know. <laughs> oh, yeah. gosh. All right. So first up, let's get um, our weather update from this week's weatherman, Danny Miranda. Thank you, Brittany. Good morning, Lompoc. I am love the weather by Danny Herring. See you next week. See you next This week is going to be sunny and hot. Rising to 80 degrees. I like to play the chat with the feeling song. Make sure your animals have water and shade. Goodbye, my folks. He is really upping his game. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you reminded us that if it's going to be a little warmer this week, yep. so make sure your pets, and take, yeah. dogs and cats, have plenty of water and yes. some shade. Yes. Very important. Thank you, uh, Mr. Miranda, for helping us with and that. And I think weather. he says he likes singing songs when it's warm. I think that's what he said, right? I think so, but we can clarify. Later. Yeah, but it's going to be hot this week, people, so enjoy. Yes. Sun's out, <laughs> guns out, right? And then um, on Saturday, the Flower Festival Queen had a little drive-by, right? Yeah. So we didn't get a chance to get out there, but uh, Lynn Wood from the Lompoc Records snapped these photos. But uh, anyway, every year here, we have our famous Flower Festival, and there's a uh, whole contingent of Queen candidates, and I think there was eight this year. Well, anyway, uh, Flower Festival got canceled, as we all know, but they still went out and had a little parade, which I thought was really sweet and very cool. Here's a little video. And that's the theater behind them that we'll be talking about soon. Oh, I need to work on my wave. Wait. Oh, see, they must practice that. I think so. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun on Saturday, right? So I noticed a bunch of people just joined us, and they will have no idea oh, what's yes. wrong with my face. So <laughs> I feel like I have if to give you a disclaimer in, every four minutes. Oh, uh, we should just type a little comment yeah. on there. If you're just tuning in, um, Jeremy woke up like this, and <laughs> he's going to go pick up some antibiotics later, and he's got an emergency uh, dental appointment tomorrow morning. So that yes. was fun. <laughs> Sorry. But the show must go on. We don't want to talk about it all the time, but I want, I want to scare the new people like Michelle Schaefer, Barbara Satterfield, yeah. some of those just joined us. Yeah. If they're drinking 
their coffee. This could be very scary. They could spill it. But people have said just skip the mask mm-hmm. and just embrace this new look. And mm-hmm. this, I think, is encouraging for you to never, ever chew tobacco. Well, I think that this could be mind. like a portrait for don't chew. I think um, so. you lost me at portrait. <laughs> Dental hygiene. Anyways, um, so a lot of restaurants opened back up this weekend, yes. which was nice. And so that mean I ha- meant I have to put, I have to, that means I have to put pants on now. And I did put pants on and then I immediately went back to my stretchy pants because this isn't working. <laughs> and this I found was just perfectly me um, living that quarantine life. Mm-hmm. And now I have to get back to some type of normal and it's a little, it's a little overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. And we were going to mention too, the city manager here in Lompoc uh, had an emergency um, yes. uh, declaration. Decree, de- declaration that restaurants here in Lompoc, as Santa Barbara and a few other places in the county have done, um, they're relaxing a lot of the rules that will allow restaurants to move outside, yep. outdoors into the parking lot. So kudos to the city for making that adaptation to the rules so that we can have a chance to recover quickly hopefully and hopefully that also means that maybe food trucks will be allowed in the ghetto in the wine area without um, permits and then that way that wineries can team up with them and then Mm -hmm. they can take advantage of opening a little bit sooner than later as well so a lot of tasting rooms aren't allowed to open unless two things they wait until phase three which Mm -hmm. could be you know another 15 30 days yep or they can collaborate with a food vendor so that they can provide food uh, with their wine experience. Yep. So there's, we're pushing the city as much as possible to be as adaptive and, and collaborate with the industry to make it yep. all work. So, and also yeah. some good news on that the hospital put out on Friday. The, um, the Lompoc prison here has obviously been a big cause for concern. Obviously, they are separating the numbers now. But I think it was of the 1,076 inmates that tested positive, um, 762, I believe, have recovered. So 68% have recovered, um, which is great news. So um, we're looking forward to that. And then um, the testing facility down our street, down the street that we've talked yep. about before, um, they are considering closing because they have been underutilized. Yeah. So if you think that this is something that we should be keeping in Lompoc, and take advantage of, um, check out the lhi.care forward slash COVID testing and book an appointment. It's open Friday through Tuesday. It's super safe. Um, There's always plenty of same day appointments open. Um, So you just get your patient ID and wear a mask when you arrive. So Mm -hmm. um, if that's something that you think is important to keep in Lompoc, show up and get tested. And again, this isn't you, you don't have to consider waiting to take a test until maybe you feel sick or you think you have some symptoms. A lot of it just has to do with being a part of the statistic to know who's got it, who doesn't, and what percentage of the community may have it. So that's the the whole purpose of having it. Right. And there's plenty of people that are asymptomatic. So, you know, it it doesn't hurt to get tested. It doesn't hurt to have some type of peace of mind that you're not putting other people at risk. But data is usually a good thing if it's it's clear. So hopefully the more data we have, the more clarity we can have for reopening and, and moving forward forward into the future. Yep. So we had an awesome conversation with Mark Harrier, um, as we mentioned before, and um, this episode's going to be a little more on the history of mm-hmm. the theater and some of the unique treasures that mm-hmm. they were able to find. And then we do want to do an upcoming um, feature on that because there's so many wonderful memories that people have of the Lompoc Theater, and we really think that it's going to be the heartbeat of the downtown if yeah. we can restore it and bring it back. It's so important to our community, and we can definitely make it happen. There's been Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of it's anticipation f- coming, to make it happen sooner, yep. but you know, we've had a lot of things that have. Well, they've made they've made steady steady progress, progress which yep. is amazing. They've now got themselves on the national register. They're yep. working on that, which is a huge step for tax incentives for raising funds. Yep. Um, they've uh, obviously they own the building now. There's no liens. All of those things have happened, but obviously with the stresses of the uncertainty right now, that's that's definitely a, has right. an impact. But the building's in good shape. The yep. roof is wrapped now for five years to keep the water and a lot of the yep. moisture and stuff from so getting inside. So they're going to keep pushing on it. So yeah. we, we want to see it happen eventually. And so we'd love to um, share a little bit more about the background of that. So here is um, Mark Harrier Thank you, Mark with Harrier. the Lompoc Theater Project. Can you just go back into history a little bit and describe kind of the some of the history of the theater and some of the uh, more important events that took place that you're aware of? Yes, originally it was built in uh, 1927, just as talkies were coming in. Mm. Uh, when the theater opened, it was state of the art. I mean, Cecil B. DeMille at the time was filming just down the road in Guadalupe, uh, the Ten Commandments. And so he was aware of it, and a lot of dignitaries were aware of it and sent telegrams 
Um, the original paint job was done by a very famous Hollywood scenic designer. So it was the bomb when it opened. What they didn't realize when they built the theater, that you needed things like dressing rooms and things like, uh, you know, functioning lobbies and, and stuff right. like that. Okay. Which is why we can't just restore the existing building because yeah. it would not be functional. Because they didn't have dressing rooms, a very fortunate is that the oldest commercial building in Lompoc and therefore one of the oldest existing commercial buildings in the county and the state is the Lompoc, original Lompoc land office. That was on A Street at the corner where um, the theater is now on the, as you look at the theater at the left-hand corner, that's where the land office originally sat. Yeah. That's where all of the streets were named. That's where all of the land was sold. That's where all of the lots were laid out. Mm -hmm. That's where <laughs> Lompoc happened. Yeah. So Amazing. when they moved it, typically Lompoc destroys its history, but they needed dressing rooms. And so they just pushed it to the back and stuck it to the side of the building. And that became the dressing rooms for the theater. <sighs> The fact that they did that and the fact that the original building was built out of redwood is why it is still standing today. And that is one of the big uh, charges and the big things that we have to do is historically uh, restore and preserve that. And we, in our plans, we move it back out onto A Street where it belongs. That's uh, something that I was super excited about was the discovery of the Disney connection way yeah. back, uh, the Mickey Mouse Club and stuff, and I, a few other People have mentioned that, but I don't think people even understand or even know about that history. I had heard anecdotally, both from growing up there, but also since I had come back to Lompoc, that that Lompoc Theater had the Mickey Mouse Club on Saturdays. And I thought, well, that's cool. I mean, I grew up watching the Mickey Mouse Club with, you know, uh, Annette and Cubby and, you know, that's the Mickey Mouse Club for my generation. And that's what I thought we were going to find. And so I and... Uh, Ann Ramsey, another board member, were cleaning out upstairs at one point, and, and it was in the Calvert's office. Earl Calvert was a, a, a hero to the town. He founded the Lompoc Historical Society. He ran this theater for decades. Um, he helped build uh, the Methodist Church, and he preserved a lot of buildings. He preserved the library, which is now the Lompoc Museum. All of that would have been torn down without him. But anyway, so we're going through all this trash and we're down to maybe a handful of boxes left and I'm ready to just give up. And finally I say, and I see, okay, I'm gonna go through this one last box because I, you know, and so I'm going and I'm going through it and it's the same old calendars and old bills. And then finally I get to this folder and I open it up and I just start going, ah! literally like that and Anne's like well, what she thought I was having a heart attack and I was going ah ah <laughs> down and Mickey Mouse is looking back at me but it wasn't the one from the 50s Walt Disney had a Mickey Mouse club in American movie theaters and eventually worldwide which started in the early 1930s and this was from that. And these were, are in pristine condition. The original contracts, the original handbook on how to operate a Mickey Mouse Club. There were all sorts of programs from the early 30s of Lompoc that they gave out to the kids who went in Lompoc. There was a membership card. It's just magical stuff. Ah. We keep finding wonderful things and uh, historical parts of the theater. We found original filigree, uh, wallpaper from the 30s in a, in a place and it's it's been like uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of a thing sometimes. Wow. And sometimes it's like oh there's a lot of pigeon poop. Right. <laughs> so it's it's from the uh, miserable to the euphoric and it just depends on what time of day it is. Yeah. Sure. Oh my god that's amazing. Thank you so much, Mark, for yes. chatting with us. And that there's was, so much history. There's there. so much history. We have a really cool little treasure here in Lompoc. So. Yeah. So if you're curious to uh, see some of this stuff and learn more about the history, and because you had no idea, um, the website is lompoctheaterproject.org. Yep. Um, and there's a I bunch think it's of history. Lompoctheater.org. Lompoctheater.org. I don't anyway, know. Google if it. If you Google it, it'll but come But there's up. some really great, uh, there's some photos. Um, you can see before and afters yeah. of when they first got in. This was kind of there. a couple yeah. cool old photos that you found. Yeah, so in the 1920s. 
That was from the yeah. inside. And then the theater um, opening. I just love that drawing, Isn't too. That cool? Pretty rad. And then that's the inside now. That's after they've cleaned it all out. Yeah. So um, they did, they've did. they done a ton of work so far to that place. Yes, yeah. for sure. When we first walked through, we ha literally had to wear masks, yeah. which we're we supposed to, to do now. <laughs> but that's because there was just so much. Um, the birds had gotten in there, uh, and they were in there for years. And um, so it's amazing how far they've come. So Big time. So they've gotten it cleaned out on the inside. Yeah. They are renting um, spaces in the front. So they've got yeah. income coming in. So Definitely. no debt. Um, so it's a, it's a great starting point for the theater. Yeah. So and best case scenario, we can get it refurbished, reopened eventually. And it will be not just a place for going to see a movie, but for live performances, yeah. for kids, for students, for as, as busy as they can make the place. That's the plan, which yep. I think is really awesome. Yep. Um, all right. So we wanted to remember a few few of those who have fallen on Memorial Day versus just thinking about this being a three-day weekend of barbecues and camping. Um, it's a holiday for a reason mm -hmm. um, to, to take a moment to remember those who have um, fought and died for our country and for us. Um, yep. So we found three people who were from Lompoc that we wanted to highlight. Yeah, and there's many, uh, I think there's uh, over 50 uh, that are recognized at the Lompoc uh, Memorial the Veterans Memorial, but we just wanted to pick out a couple. This, um, the first one here is Joaquin Gonzalez Hernandez, and he was born here in Lompoc in 1923, and um, he enlisted in uh, for World War II, and he um, he did pass away under artillery fire, and was awarded the Purple Heart for his service. Huh. And then we have Edward Salzman. So I wanted to read a little bit of this. Uh, this this gentleman got the Navy Cross, and there's a little story here uh, about what he did to earn that. Um, so this would have been in July of 1944 in Guam. Observing an adjoining unit in an extremely untenable position, Sergeant Salzman unhesitatingly and with complete disregard for his own personal safety exposed himself to intense, persistent hostile fire in an effort to locate the Japanese emplacements and direct the fire of his own platoon against them for the purposes of assisting the other unit. Although mortally wounded while carrying out his hazardous mission, he courageously dragged himself back to his squad and skillfully placing the man in advantageous positions continued to direct the fire accurately and effectively until he succumbed to his wounds. Sergeant Salzman's brilliant initiative, indomitable fighting spirit, and self-sacrificing devotion to duty in the face of grave peril were in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. He gallantly gave his life for his country. And then we have Sergeant Daniel Joseph Vaughn. Um, he passed away in central Vietnam and he was also from, from Lompoc. Um, the explosion killed four crew members of the Wolfpack gun platoon that were in one of the tents, and that included Sergeant Vaughn. So just wanted to take a rem yeah. moment to remember those. Maybe if you have time today, you can go out and walk the building um, and check out the, the memorial that... Um, yeah, I'm not sure if the park's open yet, but oh, there is a... Not, I didn't think about I'm that. I'm not sorry. sure. We'll have yeah. to find out. But there's a beautiful uh, Vets Memorial. It's put together by Fallen Warriors. The Lompoc Group raised mm -hmm. their own money, uh, put together a really stunning... $123,000 yeah. they raised to yeah. put up this memorial to remember those yeah. um, from Lompoc who had, yeah. who had lost their life in war. So. Yeah. So or in we, service. We just want to uh, take a few minutes to uh, remember why more Memorial Day exists and yeah. not just blow through it like another holiday. Yes. So thank you guys for yes. doing that with us. All right, where are yes. we at? All right, so um, back to some kind of fun, silly stuff. We have some... Think, uh, Heather Bedford just let us know that it is open. So oh, it is. This is up thank at Beatty you, Park. So if you want to take the family out, keep your social distance. Yes. Um, but there's a beautiful memorial there at Beatty Park. So yes. check it out. You Thank time. you, Heather, for doing that. Yes. Um, so we had a couple kid associate producers who wanted to put together some yes. segments. Um, so I'm going to start here with James. Yes. James, we, it was supposed to be last Friday, but we had to, we wanted to make sure it was just perfect. So yes. Well, we, we our to... Friday show went, went very long. So um, James is here with some science news and hopefully a little project that you can try this weekend. <laughs> We need food coloring. We need alka sauce and a big cup. 
pour the water. Did it. Pour the vegetable oil. Put some drops in the color food in the cup. Pour in the alka sauce. Sauce. Saucer. Ooh, look at it. Look, Mama. Do you know what's happening to it? What's, it? what's it? happening? It's. Sounds like a volcano. Sounds like a volcano, Mama. Like a volcano. Mama, it's 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 erupting. It's erupting, Mama. So that was James. I think he is just adorable, and I was trying to imagine what he was seeing through his eyes. So. It really did look like a volcano. That to was me. amazing, James. We want yeah. many, many more science experiments. Yes. Um, and I just love the way he said food coloring. Oh, and Alka Saucer. Alka Sauce. Yeah, Alka Sauce. Alka Sauce. I like that even better. Ah, I love that little voice. So I don't want to keep repeating ourselves, but for you, those of you that joined us lately, I, Michelle did not beat me up um, at all. She did not hit me. I just woke up with a big, uh, I don't know, maybe an abscess or something. I'm getting antibiotics and going to the dentist yes. first thing in the morning, but. He'll so be okay. You know. And I think that this, again, like I said earlier, I think this is a good lesson for people to never chew because this is probably what you look like on a regular basis if you chew tobacco. Yeah. That is. Um, yeah. That's so. not what I do. <laughs> um, and then we also have Hannah White. Yes, She we do. is an amazing artist. Yes. And she wanted to help. Say it with me, guys. Hannah White. What oh, does that like remind Hannah you of? <laughs> so, Will, um, Jeremy is going to try to follow along yes. with this video and keep up with her. She's giving us a drawing lesson. And so, this is um, our report from Hannah White. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. I'm Hannah White. I'll be your art teacher today. And today, we're going to be drawing this cute panda on a bamboo stick. And today we're going to need a flat surface, a piece of paper, a pencil, and a Sharpie or a, mark, or a black marker. And I'm going to be her student. So right now we're going to draw the head. And if you mess up, you just need to erase it. All right, Jeremy. Or if you can't do it, then you could just get a piece of tape, something that's a circle, that's what you could use for the head. And then that's how you draw a circle if you can do it. And now it's time for the body. Right now you're going to do a gotta little hurry, Jeremy. Eye. She's going really fast. Now we need to make the little eyes. And now all we need to do is do the little circle around. Now, um, teach me to mess up. It's okay, we can just work on, on fixing it. And then you're gonna grab a little nose. Just like a little oval. This is part if you want to. You can make a little hair piece. And you can name it a boy or a girl. And now, what you need to do is the little belt. And now you need to make the little cute tongue. Little cute tongue. And now, you're gonna to need to do a little tail. Little right tail. now, we need to do the ears. This one ear for right now. And right now, we need to make the little log. Just do whatever you want with it. Bamboo. You can make it fat, skinny. Now you're gonna need to make the inside of the ear like I did on this one. And now, you just make a little foot. You need to make the little paws. If you mess up if it's too skinny or if it's too big, then just erase it like I always. We're gonna have to make some grass. And now, you're gonna need to make a sun. Yeah, and if you need to stand up, you can stand up. But what I'm doing is up? I'm sitting down. And just putting my head in the spots that I'm doing it. And now, I need to do some heat from the sun. 
And now you just need to do more and more until the whole sun space is filled up. And if you want to pause the video, if you cannot catch up, then you could pause it, then you could unpause it. Right now, we're going to need to make little birds. You gotta make the birds. Put how many birds do you want? With however many. And if you want to, you can make a little bubble if it's like thinking about a drink. If you want to. If you want to. You just don't have to copy me, but if you want to watch this video, you can. Right now, I'm almost done with the picture, but I'm not done with the video. <laughs> <laughs> and now, if you want to, you could draw a little face. Oh man, how am I gonna do that? And then, if you She's want, fast. you could do a bow. And now, this one you make a little detail. Now you're done. Here's the finished product. If you don't want to color it, uh oh, we're in the Now way. we're gonna make another video of how I color it. So thank you so much, Hannah She's White. She's amazing. She's so thoughtful and patient. You actually had a really good drawing. This is all based on following along. I think you did a good, really good job. I'm proud thank of you. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, uh, Hannah. You were so thoughtful. You told me I could pause the video and restart <laughs> it, that I didn't have to copy you so I could have a little bit of my own creative license. Yes. That was really spectacular. And I hope, I can't wait to see your coloring video, which would be really cool. But. This is probably one of the best things I've ever done. I actually think it is the best thing you've ever drawn. I can't draw. Seriously. And that, I'm completely serious. Yeah. Because you that's can't draw. Cool. And that, like, just being able to follow along step by step, I felt like that was, that was very helpful. That was super helpful. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll um, export that and post that um, a little bit later today or tomorrow just for a fun video. So yeah. you kids out there, if you want to draw something kind yes. of fun, and that's a great teacher. Anybody, feel free to reach out to us. If you have some adorable associate producers that want to impress all of us and impress are they adorable? Yeah, I mean, I can't even speak today. Um, but please reach out to us. We'd love to. We'd love to show them off on our show, and we can edit a little video and yep. and share that with everyone. So, I think that's our show for today. Yes, I'm going to try to go to the dentist and look like normal for Wednesday show. Yes, which will be back here Wednesday morning at 8:30 mm -hmm. with my face all together, hopefully. Yes, but, uh, I should be a really really <laughs> packed show as well. Yep, and then we'll have um, our Friday show at 8:30 as well. So. Yep. Please, um, all of you that have subscribed on YouTube or you guys share or you invite your friends, um, the success of the show is really based upon how many people uh, tune in. So yeah. thank you guys for sharing and for getting the word out. We really appreciate it. It's very helpful. Yeah. And we hope you have a really great Memorial Day. Yes. Take care of your families. Hug your loved ones. Yep. And we'll see you And on... remember to socially distance. So yes. And we'll see you Here is your moment of zen. This was from last night mm -hmm. here in Lompoc. <laughs>